The most at-risk industries like financial, tech, and government agencies use web isolation to keep their networks and users secure. The Silo Web Isolation Platform by Authenticate allows users to experience the web in full isolation, eliminating the chance of a web-borne cyber attack. You can interact with malicious files and websites without worry, even if you're working remotely. Authenticate enables anyone anywhere on any device to experience the web without risk. See how it works at securityweekly.com forward slash authenticate. DeepWatch provides innovative managed security services that empower organizations to be more resilient against today's evolving cyber threats. DeepWatch offers game-changing capabilities in managed detection and response, managed endpoint detection and response, and vulnerability management, all delivered through a unique squad model, a dedicated group of security experts that works directly with each client. From managed security operations to threat hunting to continuous measurement of security readiness, DeepWatch is advancing the service of managed security. Measure your SecOps maturity for free by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash DeepWatch. Most breaches are caused by exploiting oversights in basic cybersecurity fundamentals, but complex hybrid multi-cloud infrastructures make cybersecurity hygiene challenging. Red Seal can help. It shows you what's on your network, how it's connected, and the associated risk across public cloud, private cloud, and physical environments. With Red Seal, you'll get control of your cybersecurity fundamentals so you can protect your organization from the inevitable attack vectors and reduce your cyber risk. For more information, visit securityweekly.com forward slash Red Seal. Welcome back to Business Security Weekly. I am your host, Matt Alderman, joined by Paul Asadorian and Jason Albuquerque. Do you always end up missing our live streams? Need somewhere to flag Security Weekly podcasts that you want to listen to? Subscribe on your favorite podcast catcher or our YouTube channel. Sign up for our mailing list and join our Discord server to stay in the loop on all things Security Weekly. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe. Security Weekly, in partnership with Cyber Risk Alliance, is excited to present Security Weekly Unlocked on December 10th, 2020. This one-day virtual event wraps up with the 15th anniversary edition of Paul's Security Weekly live on YouTube. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash unlock to view the agenda and register for free. A lot of those recordings are happening, getting finalized. We're getting all this stuff locked in. Uh, it's going to be a great event coming up in about 10 days. All right, gentlemen, I missed last week, so I had to make sure I didn't have any duplicate stories. Uh, I don't think I do. I think no, I'm okay. I think I missed good, them all. You're good. You're good. Uh, the first one, I, I love this title. Uh, your title doesn't make you a leader. This is uh, a podcast yeah. uh, jamming with Jason. He's yeah, Jason. more not, on not the, our Jason. I thought I ours, thought you put you that know? in the title. I thought you were going to jam with Jason on this story, and that's why it was jam yeah, with Jason. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually another Jason who that's jams. Right. That's right. It is another Jason, Jason Medford, Me Mefford, Mefford. Uh, he does a compliance podcast. Mm -hmm. But what I thought was interesting, it, what caught my attention was your title doesn't make you a leader. Just because yep. you have a leadership title doesn't necessarily mean you're a leader. Yeah. And in uh, I'll just quick tip for everybody. I think the podcast about 26 minutes. Listen to it in one and a half speed mm -hmm. because he speaks kind of slow. So at one and a half speed, you can <laughs> no seriously. I mean, yeah, no, you no. can comprehend it the whole thing. I mean, you can do this podcast in like fifteen. And, and minutes. I, I don't think they got into the 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 leadership portion of it for like the first ten minutes. Like they took about ten minutes from to even get into it. Yeah. So yeah, fast yeah, forward about to, ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you, yeah, a little let's bit. do it in double speed, and you're done in five minutes. It's good. It'd be perfect. Done five minutes. But it, but it was an interesting <laughs> discussion about. You know, his, his, his thesis here is, look, just because you have the technical skills doesn't yeah. mean you have the other skills required to be a leader. Yeah. And we've talked about leadership a lot on this show and some of the different mm -hmm. characteristics. Here he spends more on kind of the um, – more of the softer skills, the yeah. – the, um, what's he call it? it the – the mental mastery, right? The mental it, mastery. It's all about the mental yeah. mastery components of this. Uh, so I thought it was a very interesting. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it, it was great. I mean, you know, it, it basically goes over the fact that, you know, a lot of us start with our technical skills and, and we work our way up through the ranks based on our technical skills. But at some point, there's a tipping point, right? Where those technical skills only get you so far and you really have to start honing in on your leadership skill sets, right? Mm -hmm. And and one of the things I've noticed, you know, over time in my career is that 
organizations always don't do a good job of grooming the leadership skills. They do a great job on the technical side, right? Getting you up through the ranks mm. and becoming a manager and then a director, and you're really technically sound. But we do a disservice to our leaders by not giving them that reinforcement from a well, leadership mentorship pers perspective. Because I still think it's focused on the technical skills. Yes. I think people still have this misconception mm -hmm. that the uh, leadership skills are good communication skills, project management skills. Yes, you need those. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole other component yes. to leadership that is yeah. independent and mutually exclusive mm -hmm. from well, maybe communication skills are still important. But they are. I mean, they those are. are important, but there's but other they're, things. They're, yeah. it's, it's only a few pieces of the puzzle. It's a yeah, bigger exactly. puzzle to, to, to become a leader, right? And I mean, we've probably all seen it, right? The, 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 the images that are out there, the memes that are out there, boss versus leader and those type of things, right? I mm. mean, we've seen those. But, but at the end of the day, again, you know, I, I think as organizations, we need to do a better job of mentoring our leaders, right? Bringing them into, into that, that leadership realm and, and grooming leaders throughout the organization who have that strength. Because, you know, when, when you focus on the technical side, you're doing a disservice to those leaders' futures because at some point they're going to walk into a room and there's going to be an imbalance between them and other leaders in that room. The leaders who had that mm. mentorship, the leaders who have those skills, there's going to be an imbalance. And hey, by the way, it's going to affect their teams as well mm -hmm. because you have to have strong leadership skills to be able to have a strong, effective team. The success of the yeah. team is, is built on the leader as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and, and having not only the communication skill set, but but just some of the, as he says, the mental mastery yep. to work through mm -hmm. you're as a leader, you're going to be presented with stressors all the time. Yep. 100%. They're, they're, they're coming at you from various ways uh, and, and how you cope with them mm -hmm. and how you lead through them are things that are important as a leader yeah. and not uh, using it as a kind of a in a negative way right, right because it right. could really impact your team because stressors are going to constantly yep. come yep. at you yeah and, and think, you know i think many of the articles we cover really tie back to primary themes in some of the books that we've covered on the show oh always yeah, yeah. yeah. like the, good, the, good to great is one because extreme we, ownership is another and like when you read these articles you can almost find mm -hmm. components of sure. some of the great books that talk about because we pull out the best leadership books that yeah. we can find right yeah, at exactly. the end of the day and, and they all have that theme right i mean you know some some of the pieces you pulled out was into intuitive leadership right leveraging things like emotional intelligence but the one piece that i love that he called out is there's a lot of misconception around ei right about knowing people the the first four components of ei is knowing yourself there's only one component within that you know uh, that that foundation or the pillars of emotional intelligence there's only one about other people. The rest of them are yourself. It's about self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the type of things you pull out of EI. And then neural influence. I love that. The ability to influence people. And he basically said it's not manipulation. You're not manipulating people. What you're doing is you're opening people's eyes to decisions that they should be making for their own best interest, right? How to win friends and influence people, Carnegie. That's good. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know, so, so there's, there's principles and in, in, in strategies around influence. Right. So he brought that out along with the mental mastery. And, and a lot of it is just practice leadership, study leadership, because when the shit hits the fan, that's when your real leadership skills come out. Right. And he, he stresses this on the on the, on the best days. It's OK to coast. You can coast as a leader. But when it gets tough, when there's problems, when there's stress, that's when your true leadership skills come out and come to play. Yeah. And if you think about the environment we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Every leader is totally. under some level of stress, yep. right? right. It, it, we're just in a new world, and the leaders who mm -hmm. have that mental acuity, yeah. who are dealing and, and have those skill sets, are going to get through this situation a lot better than others. That's for sure. One hundred percent. You know, and, and one of the one of the statements that he made that I really loved is the toughest place to be as a leader is in between your two ears. It's in your head, <laughs> right? So if you're practicing that quote unquote muscle memory of being a leader, mm -hmm. it's gonna come quick, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be able point. to snap right in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this next article, uh, I, I'm curious on your thoughts on this one. The three steps CISOs can take to convey strategy for budget presentations. Mm. Cause it's budget season, right? I mean, yeah. everybody's going through budget, we're going through it. Uh, I thought this was an interesting approach. I'm curious, though, Jason, is this it? No, this work? no, no. This is this is a piece of uh, you know we said it mm. in the piece of a bigger puzzle. These are these are 
tidbits and nuggets that you can take and bring into play. Um, you know, I mean, step one is gain an understanding of the organization's cybersecurity posture. I mean, if you're not doing that, what are you doing? <laughs> right? I mean, at the end of the day, right. you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's table stakes. You need to understand mm -hmm. the organization's cybersecurity posture. But I think to add to that, you need to understand the organizations and all the business units risk um, you know, their, their ability to accept risk, right? So you, you need to know um, the appetite for risk within your organization. It's not just at the highest levels, it's within the business units as well. So being able to get that understanding, it's, it's a say easy, do hard. So that's a big piece. That's the one thing I would add in there to that step one is, is make sure you get that risk appetite across your organization. Yeah, because he, he does play on the risk side of this mm -hmm. in the in the in the presentation that he prepares right mm -hmm. i mean i think the first three slides are yep. all about where are we on the cyber risk spectrum sure uh how do we quantify cyber risk and mm -hmm. and show the risk trends right yeah but he doesn't talk about risk appetite to nope. set those three up no so that you have an understanding of well based on our risk appetite based on where we are yeah. we may be good or bad mm -hmm. right because you haven't set that baseline it, it, exactly and, and the other piece i would add in here too is Especially if you're dealing with a board, especially if you're dealing with executives, you have to have the money play. You have to talk about how this is affecting revenue, affecting sales, affecting bringing money into the organization or losing money, right? I yeah. mean, it, part, part of it could be, here's the risk of a fine from a compliance perspective, right? But you have to bring that financial aspect to it. Yeah, you really do. I think it's, to your point, Jason, less of like a spectrum and more like a matrix sure. of where are we? Because sure. To your point, yep. there's different areas of the business, mm -hmm. different uh, aspects of risk, different yeah. uh, things that influence risk, mm -hmm. and you might be in a different state depending. Sure. Your compliance, you might be great. Yep. Security might suck horribly, right? I mean, you need to start, <laughs> you know, your application security might be good. You might have a sure. really good, strong DevOps program, but, you know, your IT or whatever yeah. is struggling, right? right? Or your compliance is struggling. Well, I mean, right? th yeah. think of it... Uh, Again, it's it, it's 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 a multi-pronged animal we're dealing with here because mm -hmm. think of it just from what's coming up. We covered CMMC, I think, a couple of of uh, uh, was it last week? I think we covered CMMC last yeah, week, last or, the, week. Or, the, or the week before. Yeah. Think of it from that perspective, right? From a policy side of the aisle, you may be great when it comes to CMMC certification. From a security from a security technical perspective, you may not be in a great spot. Mm -hmm. So so walking in the door. What I would bring to my executives is, listen, if we don't go through this, this um, transformation on a security side from a CMMC perspective, here's all of the DOD customers we're going to lose. That equates to X amount of million in revenue. Here's all of the government clients we're going to lose, right? So, so you bring it to that level because that's what's going to perk the ears of the executives to say, holy crap, we're going to lose $85 million in revenue if we don't go through this CMMC certification or if we don't you know, pass at a certain level. Well, and CMMC also helps you with slide five, which is to mm -hmm. lay out a plan yeah. because it's going to walk you through that maturity. That's it. And, and you can start to lay out a plan and say, look, we're mm -hmm. here. Yep. If we want to keep where these we contracts, need to be. we need to be That's here. Right. Therefore, here's the steps we yes. need to do, which also sets your budget. 100%, right? It absolutely sets yeah. the budget because now you actually have a plan of all of the different things you need to implement over mm -hmm. time. And one suggestion I would say, and I bring to the table when you're doing these presentations is don't bring it in in one lump sum of here's the expenditure no. we need to make, right? Go go no. into it with a plan over time, and it may be a year, it may be two years. You have to know the appetite and the culture of your organization to spend. And know that before you go in because you have to lay that I, out in a strategic fashion. Yeah, because I put be, myself on the other side. If you just come in with like a, a number, that's yeah. I, I'm I'm skeptical. Totally, right? because 100%. What, there's processes that have to take place yes. before you even decide how much mm -hmm. that that might cost, yeah. right? So right there, my detector's going off, yep. and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa wait. Mm -hmm. You want to say, we need to do this, because there's always process cleanup, in my opinion, before you spend money. There's totally. always some mm -hmm. process you have to go through before you select solution and, and go do it. Unless yeah. you've already done that stuff and they've been involved, that's a different story. But right? you can tell that story. Yes. Yes. Right. You can say we need to spend because we've already done these 10 steps yes. to get us to the point of spend. And hey, by the way, I'm bringing my A game to the table. Here's the three different solutions we looked at. Here's the three different prices. And here's why I'm choosing option B. That's there you go. <laughs> then I'm like, yep, I mean, I was involved in the I mean, process. That's yeah. it. Right. I mean, just that's in and it's 10 million dollars. Yeah. Like, well, no, wait. No, no, no. You yeah. bring you bring your A game to the table. You do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. You walk. If you're asking for money. Yeah. You bring your A game. 
better have all those details yeah. and all those little pieces mm-hmm. buttoned up before you, you present it, you it. Because it will go under scrutiny. Whether, whether it's how much you need to spend mm-hmm. or not, having all the details and all the information together will help you get through that process. I mean, even for us, right, going through what Paul and I would normally do, but now what we're doing with Cyber Risk Alliance, mm-hmm. it's funny that it, when, when you see all the little departments and you start to add it all up, they're like, wait a minute. You sure? Mm. You got to do all that next year? <laughs> Maybe we want to push some things off. Right. 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 And, and yeah, so absolutely. that impacts your budget. That absolutely does. 100%. Yeah. And your top line revenue numbers. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, the new nine to five, how traditional hours are yeah. holding your business back. Uh, this article is so true. I mean, if we think about it, yep. not only are traditional way of workings out the door. I think our traditional hour structures out the totally. door. Um, and so I found this article really interesting because I haven't been in a standard nine to five job in a, a long time. Right. <laughs> I mean, if I think about it, it, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, you you, you almost feel like you never stop working. Mm-hmm. This is the one thing that my wife yeah. really gets upset with me about. It's like, okay, it, you're, you're done. I'm mm-hmm. like, nah, I got you're never to done. Do. You're no, never done. Yeah, that's right. That's never right. done. Right. Um, but if we think about it in the context of working hours, nine to five has some limitations to it, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and this article talks about some of the benefits of not being in a traditional mm-hmm. nine to five structure. And I thought it was interesting. They pointed out um, some really interesting points in here. Oh my gosh, I got to scroll to it. Hmm. I can't yeah. find it. But uh, Matt, uh, you know, this is where it comes to, I think, being an effective leader for your team is establish communicating with your team what the hours are in in but, but, but here, you know? here's the thing for me uh, establish with your team what success means yeah hours don't matter no it right i mean that's for, from right, my perspective yeah. with my teams hours don't matter at establish all how you're gonna work. here's the criteria of what success equals for our team mm-hmm. let's drive to that outcome and as long as we're driving to that outcome and we're staying productive and we're doing what we mm-hmm. need to do and we're getting our goals accomplished i'm good you want to be you know if there's something due at 9 a.m <laughs> yeah, we all know we have to step up and 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 maybe work some late hours, right? But right. but at the end of the day, you know, from an overarching perspective, I have outcomes, I have goals, I have projects that need to be accomplished, I have timelines that need to be met, right? I have budget that that we need to fall into. And the 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 only thing that would be more rigid in that structure, Jason, is working with folks in different time zones. Of course, right? You customers, account, you account, customers you account for that. Though. Yeah, you, you, that, you account for that. You got to yeah. account for that. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting. If I think back on my career, I work for places that had were international offices, right? So mm-hmm. it never really was a nine to five, even when it was right. supposed to be right, nine right, to five. Right, right. Never was a nine to five because I had to stay up late because Belgium was having an issue, sure. right? That's, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But I mean, in this exactly. in this new model, I think we're seeing better productivity, people working harder, people working more. I mean, that's just the stats that I'm seeing within my company, our customers, the conversations I'm having with other CIOs and CISOs is now it's the opposite. Now it's Take a look at your team and make sure you're not burning them out. Because in this scenario, knowing that at 11 a.m. I can get up and go you know, downstairs and help my kid out for an hour for, with yeah. remote learning, and then I come back upstairs, in my mind I'm feeling like, oh my God, I'm not being productive. I was just gone for an hour. Mm. And you try to make up for it, right? People are going to try to make up for that time because they're not used to working in yeah. this remote type scenario. Uh, make sure you're keeping an eye on your employees that they're not burning themselves out. That's yeah. a big issue right now because people are just mm-hmm. always on at this point because they feel like they have yeah. to be. No, that's true. But yeah. I, you're, you're right. I mean, for some of us, we always feel like we're on. Yeah. But to the normal employees, they could be burnout right. uh, coming very quickly. And we totally. are going to talk a little bit about burnout on the last article a little bit, yeah. which I, I thought was interesting. Uh, but here's the benefits. Higher productivity, mm-hmm. emotionally uh, healthier a better efficiency, more dedicated, more disciplined, better time management, being independent and more reliable are mm-hmm. some of the, the findings they found yeah. out, of, out of a non-traditional nine-to-five sure, structure. Sure. I mean, when, when you're in a work environment that allows you to be flexible with your time, you're going to want to always give back, right? I mean, because mm-hmm. the organization's giving to you and allowing you to work on your personal schedule a little bit, right? And giving you that flexibility, you're always going to want to give back. It's, it's, you know, I, again, for me, it's about outcomes. It's not about, you know, punching in and punching out. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's so true. Uh, talking about building a better workplace mm-hmm. starts with thanks. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you, Matt. 
Yeah, but there there we go. <laughs> and this, this article comes around every few months or so or whatever, right, with the, the whole thank you thing. And it comes back to our first article where it talked about being an effective leader. Yeah. And you, you, you can't just tell people what they want to know, what they want to hear. No. Right. And But that's the rut you can kind of get stuck in sure. is, yeah. you know, if employees say, well, you know, it means a lot when, when people say things. Well, of course it does, but you can't overuse it and just tell no, people what they want to hear gonna, all yeah, the time right. either. It's going to be meaningful. It can't be fake, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, at the, the end of the, the day. The point of this article was to really focus on the positive side, uh, using gratitude to build a better work yeah. environment to offset the stress and the negativity that potentially comes with that stress, yep. right? And, and so the, the point of the research in this article was, you know, if you are, you, you're more positive and you work and you mm -hmm. really focus on gratitude, then the work environment's a better place just yeah. naturally. Um, and so when stressors come, uh, it prevents some of the negativity mm -hmm. and some of the yelling and some of the other things sure, that happen sure. or, or potentially happen when, when, when you, when an organization gets under stress. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just interesting to see some of the research results yeah. come out the other side when they kind of flip the model to to look at the positive aspects. Yeah. Of I mean, the bigger, I, the, I, I tend to use it differently, and you got to tune it for your leadership styles sure, sure. and your team, right? I like using it when someone disagrees with you, and. Sure. You're like, hey, that's of course. Thank you. Like, encourage because I want yeah. you want that discussion to happen in a positive way. So, mm -hmm. if there's disagreement, it happens in a positive light. You thank the team, right? Yeah. It's not always just about thanking people for doing a, a good job mm -hmm. because that's. I mean, we're we're working towards the same goal as Jason, you know, yeah. outlined earlier. I think that's great. I like to to use some of that gratitude to encourage more of the mm -hmm. behavior that you want to see. I want to also encourage. It's okay to fail. One hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Like, hey, th I know. There was failure. It's good. We learned from it. Like, thanks for recovering yeah. from that. That's a you know, great point, uh, too. The, you don't want people to get down because something went Shit's always going to go wrong. Sure. <laughs> like, of course. Of course. <laughs> I, you know, I, I took this as the, the, the word thanks. I didn't really take it as, as a, you know, uh, always having to say thank you. I, I took it as appreciate your team. Yeah. All right. Appreciate the people who are working for you. Appreciate the people who are working hard for you, uh, working hard for your organization, working hard for the success of your team. And, and, and one of the biggest things I pulled out of here is it's our job as leaders to model the way. So if our employees are seeing us being appreciative of what they do, mm. they're going to be appreciative for their staff. They're going to be appreciative, appreciative so to their thank colleagues. You and then say, this is the way. This is the way. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I, I mean. Have this Phrase in college, I'm not going to use it, but <laughs> thank you, then something else. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> I, you know, it, it's funny. I, I saw this article when, when you posted it, Matt, and I'm like, Thanksgiving, I shot out an email to my staff internally and, and, and honestly to the Security Weekly staff here. And for me, it was, I need to take a step back and thank the people who have been meaningful over the last year in, in my life. And, and you know, it, during this whole pandemic in all honesty, I was sincere about what I sent to the team here where, you know, in, in, in the hard times, you guys help me laugh. You guys, you know, bring, bring a, a, a great sense of, of, of uh, camaraderie right mm -hmm. into my life. So, so for me, it's like I sat back and I said, now's my opportunity to say a quick thanks to everybody who's been meaningful in my life over the right. past year. I mean, you can do an email. You could do it with cigars or scotch. Totally. Or, 100%. You know. yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's the call. I was in quarantine, man. I was in quarantine. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, money is a great way to say thanks too, Jason. <laughs> but it's like, the, it's, it's those little silly things. But it's a good point. There's it's a lot of ways It's those little things. Uh, yeah, just a simple email, right? A simple email that's like, wait a minute, I'm thinking about this. So let me right. act upon it. A lot of different ways to show gratitude. Totally. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. They're not just one way. Sometimes just making Bloody Marys in the office is, you know. Yeah. I'm down. But that goes a long way. But it's, <laughs> I, but it's really, I, I think last week I was doing a show, I don't know, what, and I, I didn't get a chance to make Bloody Marys, and, and someone got me one, right? So, again, encouraging that behavior mm -hmm. from your whole team is, is good. You got it. Uh, this next article ties into the first segment, and I thought this was interesting. Yeah. Data safes will give users control over their data. We were just talking about how mm. do you protect everything in an enterprise environment uh, to maintain control. This is more for the consumer side. So this yeah. uh, solid project um, is trying to build these what's called solid pods to help people keep their personal data 
secure and, mm. and allow applications to access it, but not necessarily give up all that data to the Facebooks, Googles, et cetera, of the world. I thought it was a really uh, interesting concept. I haven't played with it yet yeah. um, to see how it works, but I thought it was a really interesting way to think about data security in for the consumer side. Not yeah, I mean, from a, from a privacy, privacy perspective, I, I love the concept. Um, in principle, I think it's great. In practice, I would have to see it, just like you said, right? How, do, how does it work? Um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I'm always thinking about how to keep, you know, my family's information more private and, and, and have that privacy umbrella around it. So, you know, yet to be determined as far as execution. And if you do play around with it, let me know, because <laughs> I'd love to see how it how it works. Right. Yeah. I like, I mean, I like your. It, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say it's it's all in the implementation, the mm -hmm. ease of use. We were just talking about the last segment. Right. If there's a lot of friction and it's not easy to use, nobody's going to use it. Nobody's going to use it. Right. Yep. I was just saying, I liked your last article, too, because I, I think I'm suffering from this. <sighs> Largely because we do shows like and they're it. all virtual. And then all your meetings yes. are virtual. It's like everything is virtual now. Yeah. And it is just exhausting. And it gets yep. old. Yeah. I mean, my family's like, oh, we should do a Zoom call. I'm like, I kind of do those all day for work. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of want to take yeah. a break from doing Zoom calls. Like, love y'all and everything. Right. But I need a break from the Zoom call because mm -hmm. it's, it's harder to... It almost seems like interaction is more forced uh, over sure. virtual. I mean, we see that here in the studio where we, we ha want to get everyone involved. And like the, the Visio diagrams that mm -hmm. depict how we want more monitors in the studio so we can make sure we're engaging with those that are virtual. Yep. It's just it's amazing the, the, the tech we're designing behind that. And it's all because we're basically trying to force or overcome uh, that virtual environment to kind of force that interaction mm -hmm. which seems like you have to force it more virtually whereas yeah. when we're all sitting in the same room it was much easier to talk to jason today when he's in studio for yes. example and that's why i love coming here uh, yeah uh, agreed and i think th this is i pulled this article out for two two reasons one look we we know all the video calls and everything else but when i think about it from our perspective paul what do we do differently to help because we are a that's video it. podcast right we're a video webcast we're doing lots of virtual video-based events. Mm -hmm. If this is a trend that continues, yeah. what does that mean for us in this work environment? And, and how do we improve what we do and how we interact with people? And we're trying to do that with Unlock, by the way, yeah. by you know creating some of that uh, collaboration outside the platform, like in our Discord server. Yep. We're doing the live stream event afterwards mm -hmm. to to, to bring some of those live elements in. But but people have to think about this on a broader scale because if this trend continues, it's going to get hard to get stuff done. It's going to be hard to innovate in a yeah. world where people are tired of video conference meetings sure. all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I had pulled that out too. And, and we have to be smart as leaders in defining what a meeting should be. Right. What are the requirements for a meeting versus pick up the phone, have a quick call mm -hmm. and, and be right. done with it? Right. And, and quite a while back, I, um, I read a book called The Four Disciplines of Execution. And uh, my organization actually went through a whole process of, of getting folks certified in 4DX. And really, one of the things is it focuses on having your your staff focus use leverage, be engaging, and, and have accountability in what you do. But part of their discipline is saying, do we really need a meeting? Does this really require a meeting? Secondly, do we really need this entire list of attendees? It's really easy to say, yep, I'm adding you, I'm adding you, I'm adding you, I'm mm -hmm. adding you, and all of a sudden you have 40 people in a meeting. But what's the value of that? Understand yep. that each one of those people has an hourly wage that the company has to pay, right? And, and are they adding value to the meeting? Yes or no? Only include the folks that add value to the meeting, right? And the other piece is, can this be handled out of band? Does it have to actually be a scheduled meeting? Is it something you can handle out of band? Can you, can you IM somebody for the answer? Can you, you know, cover it within a quick phone call? Can you cover it within a quick email? You know, so it's, it's making sure that you're getting the most value add out of your meetings on a daily basis. So that way you're not just bombarded with meetings all day long, back to back to back to Is back. Is that to like back when I, I call technical support or I call a place and they do everything they can not to talk to me? So I have to be like, you know, is this a billing issue? 
can you visit our support site? Like, there needs to be a thing for meetings. Like, could you do this in the phone call? Like, do you really need to add this person? Is there like a uh, right. maybe, select maybe that's what they're trying to do? For a meeting, you know? Can you just send them a text for yeah. crying out loud, right? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, from, my, from my perspective, from my perspective, the reason why we do it is to make sure we're getting the most value out of a meeting and not right. not not wasting people's time, right? It's 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 bad busy just to have forty people on a meeting yeah. just to be on a meeting. No, I, we have to think about this differently. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I, we've done an oh, I think we've done an OK job when I think about our meeting structures and, and putting mm -hmm. them into smaller chunks yeah. and only having the relevant people there. It, it, it potentially adds some more meetings to the schedule on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but they're manageable. Yep. And they're, right? op we they're always... optional, too. Uh, like I like your we do an OK job. I agree, because like, I, I, I don't feel like we do a outstanding job managing our, our meeting schedules and things like that. It's hard. It's hard. And it's hard, yeah. And yeah. We're, but the thing is, you're, we're always constantly looking at ways to improve that, which is why you see our meeting schedule changing, because we're you know trying to adapt and find the, the right cadence. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I, I think a great point there, Matt, is many of our regular meetings, it's optional, right? We've got like maybe two meeting times a week. Like if not everyone has to be there every time. Like if you have yeah. something, show up to the meeting. Jason, to your point, so that's yeah. how we handle I, the required. not 40 people required sure. to attend yeah, the meeting. Yeah. So we have a meeting twice a week. Here's the topic. Here's, who's, got requ here's who's required and here's right. who's not. And if we show up and you go, no, nah, I don't really have anything. Okay, cool. Let's you know, re go regain the time. Yeah. But that's the key. Yeah. Letting the people know who are required yes. that they're required. Because you right. could be setting yes. up a meeting for somebody who has a presentation and they don't know that they have yeah, a presentation. Yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs on the meeting. That's bad busy as well, yeah. right? So that, that upfront yeah. communication and planning, having an agenda, having a plan, communicating that plan, showing who has to be there, right? Mm. So they know yeah. and they can be prepared. So like that little feature on the calendar that says required or optional, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. use that feature. That's an important one. It's a beautiful thing. Yep. The same. I've got, I've, I have training scheduled this week and I'm like, Look, this is for the sales reps, right? But I'll make all the other guys optional. If they want to show yep. up, they can show up, right? But that keeps them, it totally. keeps it efficient. So we try. Like I said, we're doing an okay job. An okay job. Yes. yes. Do an okay job with meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining me. Everyone, thank you for joining us. And we will see you next week on Business Security Weekly.